Bradley Chubb is having a dominant season for the Denver Broncos off the edge. What's attributed to that? Plus, the secondary is playing elite, and nobody's talking about it because of the Broncos' offensive struggles. We tell you why you need to pay attention to the defense. Plus, Russell Wilson popped up with an injury. How concerning is it going forward? We address that and much more on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are Locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Broncos country? Welcome into a brand new episode of Locked On Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much to everybody in Broncos country for tuning in and making Locked On Broncos your first listen of the day, free and available everywhere you get your podcasts in audio format, or whether you watch us on YouTube. Thank you so much. Do us a favor, hit that subscribe or that follow button so you never miss out on a day's worth of Denver Broncos news, content, coverage, and more from the South Stands to the End Zone. I'm your host, as always, Cody Rourke, Broncos reporter for Mile High Sports, joined alongside, as always, by my co-host, Sarah Bettinger. He's the site expert, predominantly orange. Dot com. Sarah, my friend, you know, we've been so caught up in injuries for this Broncos football team, the struggles on the offensive side of the ball, and it's overshadowed the fact that the Broncos defense is playing really, really well, and there's one guy in particular who's had a kind of chip on his shoulder in a big-time year. Bradley Chubb's been dominant as well. I can't wait to actually focus on the defense on today's episode of the show. Exactly, Cody. We get to take a little step back and really just kind of focus on some of what, I mean, really has been the only good for the Denver Broncos this season, right? And the consistent good, which has been the defense, which has been that pass rush unit. And a lot of listeners and people who watch on YouTube will remember that dating back to training camp and preseason, we were kind of wondering what is this Broncos pass rush going to actually look like? We think and we knew at the time that they got a lot of names out there, right? Bradley Chubb, Randy Gregory. You like the, you know, the intrigue that Baron Browning brings to the table. Nick Benito, the team's top pick, even guys like Aaron Patrick, Jonathan Cooper. But I don't think anybody was really, you know, solidified in the idea that this could all work out. But Bradley Chubb, Cody, has absolutely been living up to his billing as a former top five pick. He's been destroying the tackles that have been placed in front of him this season. I know a lot of people, everybody's kind of wanting to, you know, bend towards that cynical side right now with the way things are going in Broncos country. So they want to say, well, you can't play the Colts offensive line every week. Well, you can't do this every week. And. Well, I, I, last I checked, Cody, the next game is against the Los Angeles Chargers, who don't have Rashawn Slater, and they have a you know a, a sieve at right tackle, just like the Broncos do. So, I mean, it could be another situation where Bradley Chubb is going to be building on what is a near league high five and a half sacks. I mean, he's he's up there with the best of the best this year, having a dominant season at the best possible time. You know what's weird, too, is that situationally, this is stacking up a lot like the 2012 Denver Broncos. The Broncos were sitting at 2-3, and and they were a 24-point deficit away from being 2-4 and against the Chargers. Ironically enough, on Monday Night Football, could this be the week that the Broncos get back on track? I mean, there's not a lot of faith by Broncos fans with that statement, but, you know, the defense is playing at a very, very high level, led by Bradley Chubb. And and I'll say, like, while Chubb is also playing dominant— Sarah, if you look at the scheme that Ajiro Evero has dialed up in terms of being able to create pressure looks for guys to get home free, I mean, he's doing different stunts, different twist packages that allow for guys like Chubb and Baron Browning and other guys like inside linebackers Josie Jewell, Alex Singleton to come free and get after the quarterback. It has been great. And, you know, here's the deal. Chubb right now is the second leading sack person in the NFL behind Nick Bosa at five and a half sacks so far on the season. We said it in the offseason. This is a make or break year for Bradley Chubb, who's playing for a contract in Sarah so far. I mean, he is on pace to have a very, very historic season from his standpoint, which is hard to believe considering his rookie season. He almost broke the rookie sack record. Maybe he can surpass what he was able to do his rookie year this year. And if that's the case, I think that the Broncos will pay him. Not only just him, Baron Browning has been dominant as well as an edge rusher. We talk about his ridiculous numbers, the 10 pressures on 22 total rushing attempts. It's crazy. The Broncos had six sacks on Thursday night football. Didn't allow a single defensive touchdown, yet they still lost. That right there is very crazy, and obviously it's pinpointed to the offensive side of the ball, which, Sarah, I mean, we haven't talked about it enough, and I feel like it gets overshadowed. Caden Stearns had two interceptions this past week against the Colts, 
and the offense couldn't do anything to put points up or to convert to give Denver some breathing room. And that right there is inexcusable. That's not on the defense. And I think that that's the issue that we've seen. Like against the Raiders, the Broncos' defense on the field way too much, and then they give up a big run, and they're gassed, they're tired. The Broncos' defense was the same exact way late in the game against the Colts. They were on the field too long. They had a couple of plays that happened that, you know, gashed them a little bit for maybe a 10- to 12-yard gain, and they were just on they were on their heels, and that's not their fault. That's on the offense to get it going. But, man, I tell you what, in your opinion, with how Chubb and the defense is playing right now, Sarah, would you extend Bradley Chubb as a member of the Denver Broncos going into next year? I absolutely would, Cody. You know, you see a lot of people talking on Twitter about, well, if you know, if this is going to keep going the way that it's going, should the Broncos entertain trading Bradley Chubb? And certainly, I mean, that's an idea, right? You know, the Broncos don't have a first or second round pick. Bradley Chubb is playing out of his mind. You get the logic there. But at the same time, would you rather have a first round pick or Bradley Chubb? I mean, it, it just people need to remember like this is not a 28 29 year old guy who has a history of injuries he's 25 26 years old still about to enter the prime of his career and playing the best that we've probably ever seen like a lot of people used to criticize Cody you remember we were we we were there and we've seen it and heard it a lot that Bradley Chubb he just can't get the job done he can't finish plays he he can't get the sack he's he's like the almost sack artist you know like there was a lot of people saying that in Broncos country, and now we're seeing Bradley Chubb get home. We're seeing him force fumbles. We're seeing him make plays against the run. We're seeing him make plays in coverage. I mean, he's out there doing everything right now. I would absolutely extend Bradley Chubb, and I guess the question really comes down to George Payton of, hey, do you feel like maybe he's a foundational piece of the team, or do you feel like you need to get a different foundational piece with a first-round pick? Because the way that Chubb is playing, I think you could absolutely get a first round pick for him. The question, uh, the question is, do you want to send that signal to your locker room, right? If you trade Bradley Chubb, you're sending a signal that you are tanking. Absolutely. And there's maybe a tie in with that. If you know, with Russell Wilson and the shoulder injury that we're going to talk about later on, if that does become an issue, Cody, maybe it's something you consider, but that would be a, in my opinion, a worst case scenario type of situation. Obviously you want to see this team stick together and Bradley Chubb be part of that. One of the questions I have, too, I, I just don't think there's an NFL team out there that would take Bradley Chubb as a half-year rental for a first-round pick. I don't think they're giving that up. Heck, the Rams didn't even give that up for a guy like Von Miller. I mean, granted, they didn't have any first-round picks anyways, but you get my point here. I, I do want to urge this to Broncos country as well. Okay, yes, the Broncos in 2023, they don't have a first-round pick. They don't have a second-round pick. They'll get all that stuff back in the 2024 NFL draft. Do the Broncos, I mean, can they make it another year, another NFL draft cycle where they don't have that? I think that they certainly can, especially with free agency coming up and everything, you know, there's going to be a multitude of players and needs that the Broncos will have that they can maybe address in that standpoint. But I think that, you know what, the draft is never guaranteed, right? It's nice to be able to say, hey, I have premier capital, but as we've seen, nothing always works out the way you intend with a first-round pick. So I will throw that out there as a little bit of an option to weigh. But Broncos country, coming up here in just a moment, we've been talking about how good the pass rush has been for the Broncos. Can we talk about the secondary? Well, you know what? We're going to do just that coming up here in just a moment. But before we do that, let me tell you about Prize Picks. The sponsor of today's episode, Lockdown Broncos and Prize Picks, is Daily Fantasy Sports Done Right. With the Prize Picks app, you choose two to five players that you're focused on heading into the week, and these players will have a projection set by Prize Picks. And you simply choose whether or not they will have more or less than their price picks projection, which could allow you to win 10 times your money on any entry. There is no competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. So download the Price Picks app or go to pricepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code LOCKED ON. If you deposit $100, Price Picks will give you $100. If you deposit $50, Price Picks will give you $50. Don't forget to enter promo code LOCKED ON to sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. <laughs> The Broncos secondary has been playing elite level football the last couple of weeks, and obviously they'll have to navigate the rest of the season without Ronald Darby, who tore his ACL 
in Thursday night football. But there's some really promising optics coming forth for the Broncos, especially in the secondary coming up. Just want to say thank you so much to everybody in Broncos country for tuning in, making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day every single day. Free and available everywhere you get your podcast or whether you're watching us on YouTube. Mile high salute to you. Thank you so much for tuning in and talking all things Denver Broncos football with us. Remember to keep comments civil and respectful to other members of Broncos country down below if you're watching on YouTube. Sarah, my friend, you know, the, the Broncos pass rush to the front seven led by TJ Jones, Draymond Jones, Bradley Chubb, Baron Browning, Randy Gregory, and he was healthy. Other guys in the mix there has been really fun to watch, but you know me as well. I'm a defensive back guy. And the secondary has been playing really good football this season. Going back and watching the film, their communication is on point, Sarah, and that has been so huge for them. And five weeks through the season, they're playing at a high level. They're even doing so without Justin Simmons at the safety position. That right there is a very, very exciting thing to look forward to because he will be back. I know we'll talk about that in a little bit. But here's an interesting statistic here for everybody in Broncos country. And I, I think that it kind of negates the point because everyone say, oh, well, look at the teams that they played. Denver doesn't schedule who they play. They just go up and they say, okay, this week, we got this team. We got to go and we got to do our job. The Broncos defense is doing their job, folks, for the most part this season. But an interesting stat here. They have not allowed a passing touchdown since the first quarter of week three against the San Francisco 49ers on a play that arguably should have been called offensive pass interference. They're playing very, very high-level defense on the back end of that secondary. Get some really good wide receiving matchups that we've seen the last couple of weeks with Devontae Adams. We've seen it with Darren Waller. We've seen it with other guys as well. More recently, Michael Pittman Jr. and Alec Pierce. That's there. Tell you what, it's fun watching this secondary, but there is a rising star that we uh, have very high expectations for, I'd say, going through the rest of the way, and his high-level play is kind of maintained here. There is. That's Caden Stearns, the second-year safety out of Texas. We saw a ton of big plays from him as a rookie. Now coming off a two-interception game against the Indianapolis Colts on Thursday Night Football. And really, as much as we like to credit players that caught, you know they turn the ball over offensively for being the reason that you lose a game, you can't help but think that Caden Stearns really should have been a major reason why the Broncos should have won against the Indianapolis Colts. He really put them in great position to, to win this game in terms of setting the offense up with great field position, really just making some great reads against Matt Ryan. And not only the two interceptions, but we talked about the hit that he had uh, on Michael Pittman Jr. earlier in the game that caused an incomplete pass. Would have been one of the Colts' biggest offensive plays of the game, but he jarred the ball loose. Cody, as we talk about kind of transitioning into life without Ronald Darby, which he's obviously, he's torn his ACL, he's out for the year. And Damari Mathis, he, we'll talk about him in a minute. He's going to be the guy to step up at corner. But with Justin Simmons coming back, P.J. Locke hopefully coming back from that concussion as well, now you have sort of what I would consider, and I mean, at this point in the NFL season, it's great to be able to say this, but an embarrassment of riches at that safety position, right? You have a lot of guys that can play at a very high level. We saw P.J. Locke, he forced that fumble late against the San Francisco 49ers. We've seen, obviously, Justin Simmons has a long history of causing turnovers. Kareem Jackson actually, in my opinion, had a very good game against the Colts as well. So, Cody, I think that what do you do? Do you get Caden Stearns additional reps any way that you possibly can? And how do you do that if you're a Zero Evero? You've got four starting caliber safeties on your roster right now, and you have an injury to one of your main guys at corner. How do you go about getting these guys more snaps? That is a huge question. But you know what? Like you mentioned it, a Zero Evero. And, and Sarah, remember the question we had a little bit in the offseason with all the edge rushers that Denver has, like with Randy Gregory, Bradley Chubb. Well, how is Baron Browning going to be in the mix? Nick Benito. We've seen a Zero Evero get creative where he's putting Bradley Chubb and Baron Browning on the same exact side. One kind of as a stand up on the outside of the tackle, one guy wide. And we've seen Randy Gregory on the other side, Draymond Jones. Like he's gotten creative with his personnel and his matchups. Now, I think maybe you have to ask the question. In, in certain situations and in dime, right? I mean, you can be creative whether you take a defensive lineman out, you take another linebacker out, and you add another defensive back guy. Do you put a guy like P.J. Locke in as the dime backer, but then maybe go a little bit lighter with your defensive line, throwing an additional guy? Can you play Caden Stearns inside the slot? Oh, well, he was playing the nickel. He's playing the dime regardless before, right? You know, when Justin Simmons' injury happened, it forced him to drop from the, the dime package to being able to drop back to that back-end safety. 
I think that you have a, a multitude of cover guys, especially with Justin Simmons' return here, Sarah, with Patrick Sertan, with Damari Mathis, with Kareem Jackson. I mean, Ajiro ever can be creative on the secondary side of things as he has been with the defensive line, with the edge rush. And I, I don't know how it's going to work out. I don't know what potential looks we're going to see. But at this point in time, Sarah, Caden Stearns has been playing really good football. You can't afford to have him not on the field, right? You always say you always have your best 11 players on the field. Caden Stearns has emerged as one of the best 11 players. Like the, the plays he made against the Colts, that was smart, instinctual football where there was communication. The secondary, as we've talked about it, has communicated. That's their biggest thing. And you can see it when you're watching the film. You can see him passing up coverage to guys. I mean, heck, even Ajiro Evero is dropping both edge rushers into coverage on certain passing situations, blitzing a linebacker and having the defensive ends and the defensive tackle crash outside and fill in as well. It is creativity that we never saw with Vic Fangio. So I'm excited to see how it all pans out. But here's the biggest question. You talked about Damari Mathis, a rookie cornerback. We've seen some promise for him. He got thrown into the mix a little bit on Thursday night. He had several missed tackles, which is obviously an area that he needs to improve on. And I imagine the Broncos and the coaching staff, they're going to go out when they're going to attack that. But well, having like these veteran guys with Simmons return, Kareem Jackson, I mean, Caden Stearns kind of being an elevated guy, Sertan, we all know who he is. How will that help elevate a guy like Damari Mathis to where he can feel confident playing, knowing that he does have help behind him or over the top in a lot of situations? Well, I think one thing that's going to build his confidence for sure, Cody, is just the fact that he's been getting tested already. Anytime that he's been out there on the field, he's getting opportunities. The teams that are going up against the Broncos are saying, all right, Ronald Darby just went off the field. Let's throw right at number 27. And they did that a lot against the Colts. And he was frankly up to the task. Yeah. He got beat a couple of times, but I mean, he's a rookie. And not only that, he's a fourth round draft pick. But at the same time, I think the expectations that have been thrust on him after a great offseason, he's he's made some really nice plays already, not just in coverage, but as a tackler coming up and run support. He's been really solid so far. So building his confidence, we've seen. Look at what it did for Caden Stearns, right? I mean, over the last two seasons, we've seen him be able to really thrive in this defensive, you know, two different defensive systems, actually. We've been able to see him thrive because the guys around him are playing at such a high level, and you feed off of that. You feed off of that confidence. And for a guy like Damari Mathis, the opportunity is going to be there. The ball is going to come your way. So get ready against Mike Williams, against Keenan Allen, against, you know, uh, Josh Palmer, whoever else you're going to get opportunities immediately to go out there and make a bunch of plays because the ball is coming your way. Teams are going to try to pick on you and you're going to have some help. You're going to have some really good help from your buddies over the top of Justin Simmons, Kareem Jackson, Caden Stearns, et cetera, et cetera. But at the same time, Cody, I think he's got to earn his stripes out there being part of this big time defense. He's got to prove to teams you don't want to throw at number 27 and he's got to go out there and just make those plays. I think those are fair points to make, and obviously Broncos country will preview the Chargers matchup. We'll talk about some of the storylines a little bit more in depth later on here in this week. The Broncos don't play until Monday Night Football next week. We'll have you covered leading up, including a crossover show with the Lockdown Chargers podcast a little bit later on this week on Thursday's episode, Lockdown Broncos. But Russell Wilson right now, he's dealing with an injury. He's going through a, some ups and downs. He's struggling right now in the Broncos offense. What's the word on his injury? How long might it impact him? And will he play through it? We'll dive into that coming up here in just a moment. But before we do that, let me tell you about Built Bar, the sponsor of today's episode, Lockdown Broncos. If you haven't tried Built Bar Puffs yet, you are missing out on one of life's greatest joys. And guess what? There is a brand new flavor, like we mentioned, delicious, indulgent cookie dough covered in chocolate. That's right. Built has done it again with the cookie dough chunk puff. They have a light and chewy texture with real cookie dough chunks. And of course, they are covered in 100% milk chocolate. And here's the thing. Like, we all love cookie dough. I know I love cookie dough. I eat it out of the fridge all the time. Now you get to have something that's convenient on the go. Plus, it's also healthy for you. 15 grams of protein and only 160 calories when you consume a cookie dough chunk Built Bar Puff today. And I want you to get yours by going to Built.com. And when you go to checkout, make sure you use promo code LOCKEDON15 and you'll get 15% off your next order here today. Once again, promo code LOCKEDON15 will get you 15% off your next order at checkout when you go to Built.com today.
Russell Wilson is battling an injury in his throwing shoulder. Is there concern that it may impact him for a foreseeable time here in the future? Thank you so much, Broncos country, for tuning in, making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day every single day on your favorite audio podcasting platforms or whether you watch on YouTube. Thank you so much. Sarah, we got the report over the weekend on Russell Wilson that he flew to Los Angeles on Friday to get an injection in his right shoulder, his throwing shoulder, where he has a partially torn latissimus dorsi, or as people are going to say, the lat. People are like, what does that even mean? It's like this muscle tendon that's kind of connected to your shoulder and your back right here. And often at times, you know, we've seen Russell Wilson get sacked several times. He's been sacked 16 times so far this NFL season, which is not ideal. That's been an issue. But also, there's also some other things that could be attributed to it, like overusage. It's one thing that, you know, the symptoms say if you overuse your shoulder or you overcompensate, you do too much, it can affect your ability. Things like throwing and, and along that nature. Sarah, in your opinion, like, is this a concern for you here with Russell Wilson? Because... He's got a lot of questions as is. He played arguably one of his worst games of his career this past week on Thursday Night Football. Obviously, his worst game as a Denver Bronco. He did not look like Russell Wilson, and he's been under national media scrutiny, and the Broncos have as well for trading for him because of the performance. Outside of all this noise, how concerned are you about this injury to Russ? I mean, at least a little bit, right, Cody? I mean, I think I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little bit concerned about it. When I was reading some things about it online, I, I was looking at a lot of people are saying this is a pretty common baseball injury, but it's not commonly treated with an injection. So we'll kind of see how that works out for Russell Wilson. I'll be fascinated to find out just exactly what this means in terms of the long-term prognosis, right? It sounds like he's going to play – for the you know foreseeable future it sounds like he's going to go out and play against the chargers and then we'll kind of see from there and, and that's not the way that they're wording this that's not the way the team is pitching the injury or anything it's just kind of like from our perspective i think we kind of have to wait and see yeah. right we have to wait and see how he's going to respond to playing another game with this injury diagnosed and i guess how long has he had it right i mean how long has he been dealing with it and just ha it hasn't been you know popping up but we know he popped up on the injury report last week and everybody was kind of like, what is, what's the deal there? Uh, so, I mean, man, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't at all concerned about it. Cause I think you, you just kind of be having to convince yourself of something that's not necessarily true. Like, uh, yeah. Oh yeah. It's no big deal. You know, he's just got a torn, a torn lat. Like it's no big deal. Right. I mean, like, well, I mean, I don't throw the ball as hard as he does, you know, 40, times a game I don't I have no idea what that's like and how would it work out Cody if he has to kind of have like managed days during practice during the week right like if he can't practice fully every week that could impact things as well because that's obviously a huge concern among this whole conversation so to me does do the Broncos go out and sign another quarterback as any emergency situation do you stick with the guys you got like Brett Rippon and Josh Johnson are still on the team obviously but if anything were to happen to Russell Wilson of course, we've talked about this. Not good news for the Broncos, regardless of who you sign or already have on the roster anyway. But at the same time, do you protect yourself here and try to figure something out, a contingency, to get that in place? And we'll see if the injection helps at all. You know, like you mentioned, he plans to play through it. Is that going to hurt him? Is that going to hurt the Broncos' offense even further? I mean, they're struggling. The offense is struggling right now, and we have no idea what it's going to look like with brand new players on the offensive line. I think, you know, if Quinn Miners is back, it boosts the right guard position. Right tackle is a major question mark right now. We know that Calvin Anderson can slide in and play left tackle and be very serviceable as he's proven in the past, but has a small sample size. How does all of this impact Russell Wilson? What if he continues to take more shots? Because really right now, Sarah, th there's a bigger issue with the Broncos offense, not to mention, you know, Russell Wilson is having a hard time executing, right? Everyone wants to blame play calling. Play calling for the most part has been fine. We'll dive a little bit deeper into that a little bit later on here this week, locked on Broncos, because that's a subject matter. Broncos fans have even said the Broncos should bench Russell Wilson for Brett Rippon. As much as I love Brett Rippon, folks, I, you don't bench a $250 million quarterback. You simply cannot do that. The Broncos invested a contract, they invested money in Russell Wilson. Now, if it's unsafe for him to play and he has a, a chance to make things worse by doing so, then you may have to look at sitting him. You may have to, he may have to miss some time in which Brett Rippon or Josh Johnson, those guys would have to step in and do that. But we're just playing too many hypotheticals right now in Broncos country. I, I do think it is worth my monitoring though, Sarah, that, you know, if he continues to struggle offensively, I think that there is a, an issue they need to look at, like, how do they fix it? And the Broncos, luckily, you know, they have time before the Los Angeles Chargers on Monday night football, but 
can you realistically fix those problems in this short amount of time when it pertains to being able to run the football well, executing just simple concepts on the offensive side of the ball, which Russell Wilson has struggled in the last couple of weeks of doing so when we talk about the second half of the Raiders and the entire game against the Indianapolis Colts. A lot of questions right now in Broncos country. And Broncos country, that'll wrap up today's episode of the show here on your favorite audio podcasting platform. Or whether you're watching on YouTube, do us a favor, hit that subscribe with that follow button if you have not done so already so you never miss out on a day's worth of Denver Broncos news, content, coverage, and more. Tomorrow's episode, Lockdown Broncos, Sarah and I are going to dive into some topics that we feel like need to be highlighted with what's going on with the Broncos offense. Is the issue really play calling or is Russell Wilson struggling? Is it a combination of the two? We'll dive deeper to that on tomorrow's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos.